headed to New York City to meet the incredible chef himself, Chef Vikas Kana. And we're gonna go have a meat tie with our pastry chef, Robert Gonzalez. And we're gonna hit up three really classic, iconic Indian restaurants in New York City. You ready for a New York City road trip? Cello. One of my favorite Mithai spots is in Jackson Heights, right in Little India, and it's Maharaja Sweets. I think it's some of the best sweets I've had outside of India. Obviously, when you're in India, nothing can compare. But for the States, I really like this place a lot. It's something that really connects with me. I think their Gleb Jamun is incredible. I just, they have a special Kalakan that I'm obsessed with. Their coconut burfi is to die for. So, I have to take my pastry chef to experience this. So what you're gonna see next is his reaction to all of these sweets that he's never had before. His reactions, you're gonna love it. You ready? Jello. So, motochor ladu. Mm -hmm. Motochor uh, would mean crushed pearl. Yep. So the way you make these is there's this like, little spoon and you put them over fry oil, then dunk them in sugar syrup and you bring it all together and it looks like crushed pearl. This is kaju pistu roll. The silver, remember what that's called? Uh, it's a good word. Vark. Vark. Yeah, so I vark. vark. And then this is special kalakand. Special kalakand is really delicious. It's one of my more favorite. Um, then, of course, gulab jamun. Gulab jamun. More uh, matachar ladu. Oh, this is the milk. Then we have milk cake. Yep. And then a coconut burfi. So, I think you go... So, kaju pistu roll was the first Indian sweet I ever had. Uh, Indira used to make them, and it kaju meaning cashew and pistu meaning pistachio. Okay. Or pista, sorry. Pista. Kaju pista. Mm. It's kind of like has almost a fudgy like texture, yeah, right? It is, but not, but like softer. Yep. I've never had anything like this. Nice and, and mm. fragrant, but like subtle. Cool. Subtle. It's very light. It's not heavy at all. This one's I a like, lot about the texture. I like this. I love texture and like desserts. I'm, you know me. When I make desserts, all about texture. This is fantastic. We just keep feeding Robert sweets because that's our job in life. Um, <laughs> and I don't eat desserts like ever. at all. This is more desserts than I've had all year combined. So I think. this is special Kanakan. This is Marie and I's favorite. Um, this has a lot of mawa or koya. Um, again, that milk that's reduced down, yep. slightly sweetened. Try this texture in this one is out of control oh my god yeah it's like creamy but there's texture in there at the same time yeah mm. i tried to make this once and i gotta admit i didn't Ooh. go great oh it's almost like cream cheesy cottage yeah. cheesy like nope. oh oh yeah isn't that ricotta almost a little know? fudge in there uh -huh. a little like i love this yeah mm. special calicot is very nice mm. I think Kalakand might be more Bengali. Let me know in the comments. I forget if that one is. Um, I don't know the origin of the Kalakand, mm -hmm. but I know that it's delicious. And of course, this you, is you got to finish it off with the Gleb Jamun. Oh, this is the moment. Now remember, right this can go in rubbery as well. Oh yes, rubbery. This, this is what you were telling me. Yeah, served warm and exactly. Oh. But this texture, this flavor. Mm. 10 out of 10. I think this is my first dessert you gave me. First Indian dessert. Was it? Was this? this was unforgettable. Thanks. Mm. They make a real good one, huh? This is so good. Such great. Just perfectly, like, perfectly soaked. Yeah. It's not overly saturated. So, it's... don't kill me, YouTube, for saying this, but in New England, we have these things called munchkins. This <laughs> reminds me of a plain munchkin soaked in this beautiful syrup. In the best syrup that you never had in your life. I want to do a coffee version of this. Right? <laughs> In the syrup. In the syrup. Maple syrup. Yep. I wanted to take my pastry chef of Atma, Robert Gonzalez, who is an incredible, incredible talent. He's currently on Food Network's Spring Baking Championship, doing an incredible job. But he was in New York City with me, and I wanted him to get an experience of really desi food in New York City. So I had to take him to Chintan Pandya's place, the Maka. <clears throat> the maca is incredible. It's been an institution winning awards and winning the hearts of New Yorkers for the last several years. I've had the privilege of dining there. Now this is my second occasion. And I gotta say, it's it's just a restaurant that encaptures the heart and soul of so much desi cuisine that I've had from India, from the States, and all over. 
The maca is an institution in New York, and Chintan is really the most perfect messenger to continue to showcase his love and his passion and really his culture. So I had to bring Robert there, and obviously he had an incredible time. Let's check it out. Um, on the top here is the bone marrow butter and um, I'm going to let you guys work on this basically you kind of hold it together kind of wiggle it so that the bone comes out and it's ready to go okay enjoy uh -huh. Oh, 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 perfect. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Kidney and testicles, it's cooked in here, simmered for a long time. Just gonna mix it well. And then, along with that, unfortunately, you can't have that. But the best way usually to have is like an open sandwich. Chef, I don't want to stop, but I need to make room. I need to leave room for what's coming. Anything surprise you so far? The softness and delicacy of that paneer was outstanding. The the kidneys and testicle, the, the flavor, you couldn't sell this anywhere if you put what it was. Change the name, lie to people, and you blow them away. Blow them away. Or get people to just try it once, right? Or teach them. That's what you do, baby. That's what you do. Oh, so good. In New York City is Queens, and Queens is this wonderful borough that has this incredible little place called Jackson Heights. So Jackson Heights is just this incredible little India, if you will. It has wonderful, wonderful little restaurants. You can get great chai, you can great get great sweets, and that's why I wanted to bring Robert here. So first, we have to stop at this fuchka cart. And for those of you who don't know what fuchka is, you're probably not watching the right channel now, but fuchka is kind of the Bengali version, if you will, of Pani Puri. And I'm still learning about fuchka a bit, but this fuchka cart actually shaves egg right on uh, the semolina puffs. It's really a delicious, fun thing to do. I was informed that this is kind of something that you will see in Bengal. And I say in the video, I haven't been to Bengal yet. So please, if you're from there and this is a thing that you've observed, please let me know. We're all here to learn. But I wanted Robert to experience this because to me, Pani Puri, Golgapa, Fuchka, these are incredible bites of food that are really the maca, right? Explosions of flavor. So I hope that you enjoy this part because watch Robert's reaction to this. This is Fuchka. Fuchka is a Bengali snack, a uh, lot like Pani Puri or Golgapa. Um, the difference is you tend to have this a little bit of shaved egg right on it. And uh, this is something they do here. Um, I haven't been to Bengal yet, so I can't speak to that. So if you're in the comments, let me know. Um, but this is basically Chef Robert doing his first fuchka. You gotta like basically just pour some of that in. Oh, I uh, don't spoon it. You just gotta pour. Oh my god! Like already, just go nuts. Already doing it wrong. Just go nuts. Just unapologetically pour it. There you go. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like savory, sweet, and unbelievable. There's this word. So much flavor. Chatpata, right? Chatpata. Chatpata. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, it just warms you up. This is wonderful. <laughs> Love this one? Love this one. Love this one. Shaved egg on all of them going forward. Naras has been around for a very long time. It is really an essential part of the New York City kind of curry mile, if you will. So I have t been told time and time again, you have to check this place out. So I finally got to go. Now, here's what I'll say about Benares before you get to see all the footage and how, why I think this place is really unique. This place is an institution in New York. It's introduced so many people to, to food from the subcontinent. And yes, you get a lot of gravies, you get a lot of things. But I think that Benares is trying to reinvent themselves time and time again with classic flavors done beautifully well. I'll say the dal that they had there was some of the best dal I have had, period. Um, it was everything you want and I, everything I love about dal. Their gravies uh, were absolutely exquisite. The chef there clearly has a deep, rich knowledge of food from the subcontinent. I found a lot of their food to be a little bit more North Indian, like you typically see in the West. Uh, in the West, there's so many like kind of North Indian-influenced uh, curry houses. But Banaras really stood 
the test of time for me. It's been catering, it's been serving New Yorkers for so, so many years. And I think that there's something to say about that. So I had an incredible time here. You ready to see some of the food? Of course you are. Let's check it out. First of all, the hospitality was second to none. I'm so, so grateful for the entire staff who really welcomed us with open arms and uh, really just, it was awesome. Uh, these are these vegetarian um, kebabs that they were doing. That was incredible. Uh, Mislpav was really, really good. Uh, I had such a blast here eating all of the food. And when I mean all the food, I think they brought us out almost everything on the menu. We begged them at one point, just stop. Uh, we were like, please, I can't, <laughs> I can't eat any longer. Um, the garmage or presentations for a lot of their stuff was really cool and thoughtful. I really enjoyed that part. Uh, but the gravies, the gravies and this doll stole the show. That doll was really 10 out of 10. Uh, this is me taking a bite of it and just being so happy. Benares really is an institution, and I had such a blast. I can't wait to go back, and I think it's a great place for people to discover the flavors of India in an approachable and wonderful manner. A mentor enables a person to achieve. A hero shows what achievement looks like. A renowned Nobel Prize winner, John C. Mathers, once said this, and it deeply resonated with me the other day as I had the honor of spending time with a chef I have admired for years, Chef Vikas Kana. Chef was kind enough to invite me to spend time with him at his soon-to-open, incredible New York City restaurant, Bungalow. In the quiet intimacy of Chef Vikas's kitchen, nestled amongst the bustling streets of New York City, I found myself enveloped in this tapestry of emotions and gratitude and awe and an overwhelming sense of humility. This was an incredible privilege bestowed upon me by a man whose name honestly reverberates across the culinary realms, yet whose spirit remains humble and grounded in grace. As Chef and I sat alone in a majestic dining room of Bungalow, we shared stories of grief failure, passion, and most of all, hope. These deeply personal moments we shared touched me in this profound manner. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would meet somebody who I've looked up to so much like Chef Vigas. See, Chef's vulnerability and willingness to spend time with me, just a mere admirer of his work, showcased in full splendor that greatness is not just accolades that you achieve, but it's in the lives you touch. Chef epitomizes the ethos of mentorship and heroism, seemingly weaving these two roles and guides as exemplars of empowering myself to be more present and to give to others, even if my giving is just my time. Now, I know everyone wanted to see all these videos of Chef and I together, but the reality is, I wanted to be very present with the time that I had with Chef. We talked about some incredible things, and the words and kindness he bestowed on me is something I will never, ever forget. New York City is a challenging place to open a restaurant, but I know Chef Vikas will do incredible at Bungalow. Bungalow is absolutely stunning, and it is an expression of his soul. It's an expression of so many years that he has worked to spread the message of Indian cuisine, going beyond borders and going into the lives of so many people. If you've ever met Chef, you know how humble and wonderful he is. So to have this opportunity meant a lot to me. I wanted to jump on here and Chef, when you see this from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you for caring about some guy some other fellow chef who works really hard to showcase that same passion that I think we both saw in each other that day. I can't wait to come back to New York City. I can't wait to experience more of your incredible food. And I can't wait to continue this friendship. Thank you, chef.